The central lesson of ecology, as I hear it, is that no complex organism can live alone. Every complex organism, not true of some single-celled organisms, but every complex organism uh, needs other organisms to gobble up the waste material that it produces, and still other organisms to produce the food that the complex organism trying to get along needs in order to eat. So healthy ecosystems flourish by this incredibly delicate combination, balance, between the flourishing of individual organisms, can't have a healthy tree, have a healthy forest without healthy trees. Individual organisms need to flourish, but they need to flourish as part of a flourishing community. You need both. Again, no flourishing in ecology. There's no flourishing apart from mutual flourishing, just as the way I hear it, the Bible is saying. In a sense, I think, Justice and symbiosis, this kind of community-wide symbiosis that I'm talking about here, are really both expressions of covenant. Symbiosis is a very unconscious form of covenant that emerged in nature on evolutionary timescales and is built into the food chain, among other things. Um, and in, in, in a way, Justice is a form, is a conscious form of covenant that we are invited, perhaps insist, rather insistently invited, to adopt, but a form of, of covenant that's still struggling to emerge in human community and is emerging on a human time scale. So we're just starting this process. And the question for us is can we get it right? I think. But Justice, symbiosis, covenant aren't the whole story. They basically describe the situation for, that's needed in order for life to flourish as it is now. They don't say very much about how those relationships are to be sustained over time. And that's where this idea of nachala comes in. It's much less familiar in Christian circles, but it's absolutely essential to a Jewish biblical understanding of land. As I said, it's usually translated inheritance or heritage, but the problem is those words don't begin to capture the richness of the concept in, in Hebrew. So I'm going to continue using the, the Hebrew this afternoon. I need to come up with a better word, but bear with me. It's in the Bible, so it's got to be a good word. <laughs> Perhaps it will help having it up here. In its basic form, Nachala refers to the land that was essential in order to sustain a nation or a people or a family. The Israelites knew they hadn't created the land. They knew they couldn't recreate it. So they sensed in this concept of Nachala a sacred duty to tend the land carefully, lovingly, and pass it on to future generations. They knew that the future generations' survival depended upon their passing the, the nachala, the land, on. But it turned out that nurturing the land in that way did more than just provide a continuing source of food. That act of caring for the land gave Israel and its people a sense of being rooted in authentic relationship to the land. A rootedness that turned that task of tending the land into a vocation. A vocation that conferred identity, meaning, purpose, and in accomplishing that purpose, a sense of human flourishing. And all of this happened at, at three different levels, at the national level, the tribal level, and the family, the level of the extended family. The promised land was Israel's Nachala. The territory as given to each tribe, allocated to each tribe, was that tribe's Nachala, their portion of the promised land. And often this word is translated portion in the Hebrew Bible. And then finally, the land allocated to each family was that family's Nachala. And I think the idea of family farm is in a sense the best equivalent to Nachala that we have in English, because it conveys that 
almost sacred necessity of passing the land, the fertile land, on to your, to your descendants. And the sabbatical laws, of course, support that in two ways. One is the notion of leaving the land fallow every seventh year that we already talked about. But there's another one. The sabbatical laws also mandate that after seven sabbaticals, after 49 years, in the jubilee year, the 50th year, land that had been sold or confiscated, perhaps, in, in lieu of debts or taxes, was, at least in principle, to relate to its original owners, which seems to have been designed as a way of protecting the family and the family farm from economic oppression or economic catastrophe. It's true that it, there's no indication that, that ever happened, but the idea that that's built into the holiness code is, I think, an extraordinarily important statement of the way that the, the transmission of the land, uh, the, the retention of the land in the family, uh, was seen to be deeply important. And I think that there's a connection between this idea of nachala and the behavior of ecosystems, which is the succession sequence. I don't know if you are familiar with ecological succession. We, we think of a forest as being everlasting, and it is pretty closely. The trees don't last forever. Trees in a forest die. And when they die, they expose the soil beneath the tree uh, to erosion. All of the, they expose it to sunlight, of course, and all of the shade-loving plants that live there die, which exposes the soil to erosion. And pretty quickly, sun-loving plants, weeds, jump in there and put down the first roots that hold the soil. In a couple of years, shrubs and thorns come along and put down deeper and stronger roots. In time, one of those shrubs will actually nurture, um, serve as an incubator for one of the, one of the uh, uh, sapling of the ultimate canopy species, and that sapling will grow up. And in time, it will shade out all of those sun-loving organisms, plants, and, and, and they will die. But they move on. They don't disappear. They're always moving wherever there's open ground. They're the first responders. Wherever there's open ground in the forest, that's where they go and they seed and they save the forest. My forests, the mid-Atlantic forests, are 15, 20,000 years old. The trees that make them up, no more than two, 300 years. So that's the way the forest sustains itself. And I think that's very comparable to the notion of nachala. Uh, 